meanings of following someone is continuing with him. In fact, when you stop following, say, please, stand in front of me. Can you take some gentle steps? Yes. So, I am following him. Yeah, so, you may say that I'm following him. But another, in another sense, I'm continuing with him. I don't need to be by his side to continue with him. When I move away, I have stopped continuing. So, when they say, thank you, pastor. When they say, ye are those, ye are they who have continued with me. It means, ye are they who have followed on. Then shall ye know if you follow on to know the Lord is going forth. Shall ye know? That's the point. If you continue. And many of you, I'm not saying some of you, many, if not most of us here, do not know how. To follow an anointed person. So no kingdom has been appointed to you. Of course, you will never sit on any throne to, to judge who. What right do you have to judge? To be successful in following. And I, and I think I, I, I nailed it yesterday. I nailed it yesterday. I mean, I couldn't believe it was a home run. I said, I, said, I, I, I said to you that the fact that somebody is your father does not mean you will have what he has. You have another responsibility towards a father. And that is not the responsibility of calling yourself a son is the responsibility of following. Fathers must be followed. The fact that he gave birth to you does not mean you can abandon him and still enjoy the privileges of a son. A certain man had two sons. So the blessings and the privileges of a father, they flow not just to the sons who are sons because of spermatozoal activity. But sons who are sons because they followed the father. Ye are they who have what? Continued with me in my temptation. Therefore, I appoint unto you a king as my father has appointed. And ye shall sit to eat and drink in my kingdom <laughs> and judge. Sit on thrones to judge. Number one, the father God gave you the father of your ministry, the father of your denomination, your father in Christ, the father God gave you must be followed. And how do you follow? Number one, you follow a father, an anointed man. Number one, by choosing to follow God himself. Ephesians 5, 1. Be ye therefore followers of God. Be ye therefore followers of what? God. Abba.
in this era of soaking messages, reading books, you know, and all these things that go with them, we have now chanced upon, or better still, become a generation of soakers, of messages, who don't follow God. Reading a book is not the same as following God. Oh, I think we must end because the thing is too much. It's, it's too much for me. Maybe we should just go and come back later. We have pastors today who spend all their time soaking messages, reading books, chanting snippets of messages, but don't even have their own quiet time. There are many people, their quiet time is a message they soak. A message they listen to. <laughs> you don't do that. That's not what you should do. The man, please, this is efficiency. It's not a voice from heaven. Paul, the man who would later on ask them to follow him, is asking them to follow God. You see, even as a two-by-four pastor with almost nothing to show for my work, I have discovered that the people who have who are Christians who follow God, who know their God are those who are able to follow me well. You don't follow a man of God by following a man of God. If God puts an anointed man, a man he has anointed before you, and tells you, my son, follow this man. Don't start by following him. Start by following the God who has brought that man before you. You don't follow a man by following him. In fact, those who haven't followed God first are not able to follow men of God. You see that they, they walk with them for a while and they fall off. I'll take it again. Those who have not followed God first are not able to follow men of God. You cannot copy spirituality. Abba! You cannot copy what? You cannot copy spirituality. You cannot copy, copy, you cannot copy spirituality. You must have your de novo spirituality. De novo. There are too many chanters of names and chanters of things who do not know God themselves in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches come out and he said who are you talking to and I'm, I'm sad I'm, I'm, I'm sad almost to the point of depression I'm sad to say that that is what we have today. The pastors of today, the missionaries of today are missionaries and pastors who are always saying in the name of the Jesus that Bishop Dagwood Mills preaches.
in the name of the Jesus that Reverend Osei Daku preaches. In the name of the God of Prophet Ousu. And look at them. They are floundering and licking dust. Because there is nothing in the spirit like Jesus whom Paul preaches. My God. The, 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 the exploits of Paul are a direct result of the Jesus he knows personally. The exploits of any man of God are not a result of some copying he has copied by his personal quest. You don't read your Bible. You are soaking message. You will not even understand what you are listening. Understand that what thou readest. How can I? Except some man teach me. And when the man came, what did the man do? He sent him to be baptized. You need a baptism into God. Not a baptism into books and messages. If you have not trained yourself to read the Bible, you will not understand any book you read. Anointings are on men of God. Be very careful. You, there is no anointing you will catch like a cold. Anointings are not in the air that you breathe. Anointings are mantles resting on men and the women God has called. But for you to get that anointing from that man unto yourself. You don't begin by knowing the man. You begin by knowing the God of the man. There are too many pastors in this generation who don't know God, but are failing buses who don't know God. But are building big congregations. In the night, they are in their rooms watching pornography. In the morning, they go carry people on buses and they are in church. But, but I tell you, one of the things you, have, you should know about God, that God, walking with God is not a hundred meter dash. It's a one million kilometer marathon. <laughs> Preaching with people falling is not the beginning or the end of ministry. <laughs> Being able to fail a hall is not ministry. <laughs> this is the work of God. That what? You believe in the God. The real work of God is believing in God. This is the work of God. The work of God is not evangelism. The work of God is not preaching. The work of God is not laying hands. The work of God is not preaching, teaching, healing. This is the work of God. That ye believe on him whom he had sent. This is the work of God. Those who believe on him are able to do the work of preaching, teaching, and healing. But the real work of God is not preaching, teaching, healing. The real work of God is your ability to know God personally, spend time with him in a room outside somewhere, two weeks with God. You see them running around like mice, sweating. Never spend one moment with God. You see him on the stage preaching. He has just finished fornicating with a singer. Never ever again think that works. take the place of knowing God. This is the work. Jesus answered. It is Jesus who taught us what the work of God is. That is why 
I doubt if you, if, if you really believe in God, if you don't have an appetite for full-time ministry. Because if you believe in God, you want to give your everything to serve God. There are too many Galamse pastors. I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, gold, and I'm happy I'm in Ashanti region, gold can be obtained in many ways. When you see somebody has gold, he got it through many ways. You can have gold through Galamse. You can have gold through open pit mining. Hello? You can even pick the gold on that. You can also have gold by going to the deep shafts inside the shafts. There are too many galamse passes. Just walking about and collecting some gold. The gold of ministry is for those who take their time and drill and drill and drill and drill. The Galamse Christianity, the Galamse ministry, it only leads to pollution of the atmosphere. You have a church, but you have polluted somebody's ministry. You've broken a pastor's heart. You have a church, but you have destroyed somebody's ministry. You have destroyed somebody's family. This is the work. I don't want to go near pastors who don't fear God. I want to work with pastors. He may not even have a big church, but if he fears God, he's my role model. I believe in fearing God. I believe in it with all my heart. I believe in it with all my heart. Fearing God. Some of you don't fear God. You lie by heart. You talk anyhow. You can insult the father who laid his hands on you. And when you finish insulting him and you take a microphone, people are falling down when you are preaching. Say, yes. One pastor broke away from his head pastor and destroyed many things. And when he left, because there will always be devils who will encourage you when you are destroying yourself. And somebody bought a BMW for him. And another pastor went and said, what you are doing is wrong. What, is, what, what I'm doing is wrong? Come. 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 Have you seen this BMW? Yes. Benz. Benz. Can you see it? Yeah, captain. Yeah. Why If what I was doing was not the will of God, would, would, would I have had this? You can even drive a chariot. <laughs> you can drive what? It does not authenticate your stupidity. Somebody who doesn't know what to do with his money can build a mansion for you. It doesn't. But since when did a human being become God? Since when did we seek approval from men? Should it not be God who should approve of your behavior? But you see, because you are not even working with God. That's why you don't even look for God's approval. Your ministry is just an, a show for men to see and applaud. But the guys who see anointed men and want to follow them, their counsel is to be followers of God. Tomorrow morning, read your Bible. Go to the God of the pastor who waited on him to get that message he preached. You too, go to that God. He will speak to you. You may not preach the way he has preached, but somebody will also listen to you. Who is listening to you? See, anointed men, great anointed men, surrounded by unbelievers, surrounded by carnal Christians. (laughs) 
from today, eh, it should concern you. Whether God is happy with you or not. Don't, we don't use fans to be, for ministry. Yeah. We don't use social media. For mini, social media I mean, the, the, so if you are having a program and only 23 people like that, pro, or what about that program, and I have 1.2K, it doesn't mean that I am more loved by God than you. We don't judge our whatever ministry by social media approval ratings. We judge by the one following God. Number two. You can be successful in the art of following by following a man. A man. Who is following Christ? <laughs> First Corinthians eleven verse one. It's a beautiful verse. Look at it carefully. First Corinthians eleven. Be ye followers. Tell your neighbor you have a responsibility. Tell him. Look into the eyes. Especially if he's sleeping. Say you have a responsibility. <laughs> Apparently. Pastor, apparently, it's not enough to follow a man of God. I, I didn't know. I'm just saying it. It's not enough to say you are following a prophet. Or you are following a certain man of God. Look at the English. Be ye what? Followers of me, even as I am of Christ. Sunakata Kroma Azanda Koshepala. It means that <laughs> before you follow a man of God, how many of you want to follow a man of God? You know a man of God. The way I am following my man of God. How many of you want to follow him? Apparently. I don't know if your English is good, but, but, but before you follow a man of God, you need to know where Jesus is going. If you don't know where Jesus can be found, if you don't know Jesus, if you, don't, if you yourself don't know God, you see, no man of God can take you to God the way you will find God. Wow. You follow a man. Yes, he looks like Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. I've never met a man who looks like Jesus like this. <laughs> Sir. Look at it all. My aim in life I'm ending. My aim in life is to follow this man. I've seen something he's carrying. A man who can work with Konsa and build the church. He's carrying something. I want to follow. But Before I follow this man, I I must know Jesus. I must know who? Many people are following men of God who don't know Jesus. You are only allowed to follow a man of God after you have known Jesus. Paul said, you know, we need pastors like that with the audacity to tell people, follow me. Follow me. But don't listen to people who only end with me. Follow those people who say, Follow me as I follow. <laughs> By 
our Jesus. Black Jesus. But this is the real Jesus. Listen. You should know which of them is false. Because you are only supposed to follow this man as he follows this one. So you should know this one. Even though you are following this one, you should know this one. Because can we all march slowly? As you are following, this man can move and follow this black Jesus, whether it's an imam or what, I don't know. Now, the moment he switches to follow this imam, what do I do? You stop following him. Because the caveat is follow him only when he is following. But if you don't know what is not Jesus? If you don't know what is not Jesus, if you don't know what is not Jesus, that's why the 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 most the greatest disservice you will do to yourself as a pastor is to know, is not to know Jesus yourself. Because once the person you are following is deviating, you will never know. Yeah, because you don't. You, you. This is Paul. Any genuine man of God will tell you to follow him as he is following Jesus Christ. Because we all have a tendency to stray. In fact, it is Isaiah who described it properly. He said, all we as sheep, like sheep, have gone astray. The easiest thing for sheep to do, whether it's a bishop sheep, archbishop sheep, reverend sheep, canon sheep, once it's a child of God, a sheep, a sheep, the easiest thing for a sheep to do is to stray. That's why the message of loyalty is very, very important because you can easily deviate from the original path. You can easily find yourself not following Christ. You are following, you are doing something, but not following. Christ is not in it. Yeah. Ray Jonah met uh, uh, Paul in heaven. He said, most of the blessed people are preaching on it. They can't, they, 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 Paul cannot recognize that this is a, even a Christian message. A pastor, Paul, Paul would say, um, is it Galatians 2 or what? 1? He said, after you have begun, who has been with you? Galatians, is it Galatians? Three, eh? Three. Who has been with you? Foolish Galatians. Who has been with you? This is so true, eh? Let me see verse two. No, one is said, after having begun in the spirit, are you so foolish? That's three, three. That's it. I, was, I was going to say two, two. Three, three. You can begin in the spirit. A pastor can begin in the spirit. A man of God can begin in the spirit. Anybody following God can begin in the spirit and be made perfect by the flesh. That's why you cannot just walk around following men. You need to know Jesus. So that if he is following black uh, by Jesus or black Jesus, you will not. At this point, I can't follow. I don't see Jesus in this one. At this point, I can't. I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm talking about it. It's here. 
you can be successful in the art of following by copying a man of God who is following Christ. Period. It's here. So there are many ministers who are more of followers of millionaires, business executives, politicians than followers of God. You will notice from the books they read that they are following these secular people and desire to be more like them than Jesus. Bishop, thank you very much. Many pastors begin following the proper Jesus. After three years, they are following an imam. Following Jesus. Noble. Look at it. Please stand up. Look at it. Noble. Noble. But a very noble man. But you I don't, I don't even know why you went to marry. Because Jesus didn't marry. Why? Why did he do that? Something. But we still like you, Jesus. They start. A great man, humble, serving God. Great. Jesus, nice. The as he is following, then he sees a man with curls. Curls? What? what, what, what? They are following curls. If it's curls, then this man could have gone to wear a wig. I didn't know you like curls. Curls? Tell <laughs> you get the curls. <laughs> get the curls, pa. No. Stalaza Shambrabasu Tekaba. Sonia Nekotaba. For the rest of your life, I pray that your eyes will be on Jesus. Yes, that's a song we say, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look forward to his wonderful. Look to Jesus. Yes, we follow prophets, we follow pastors, we follow our fathers, but your ultimate responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, is to know God, to know Jesus. This is the work of God. Sing it, my dear.
Trinity Theological Seminary, Lagos. I have a bachelor's degree there and a master's degree there. We were told when we went the first week, they told us, and I think they, they, they meant well, they told us, they said, this is not the place to find Jesus. First week, yes. He said, if you don't, this place is for people who know Jesus well. If you don't know Jesus, this is not the place. This place will not help you. You can actually live here. Backslidden. We're sorry. We were told in English, he said, this is not the place you come to find Jesus. You don't go to a Bible school to find Jesus. You must know him. First, and he validates your experiences. Sing it, my dear. Your eyes upon Jesus look for in his wonderful. Yeah. And, and, and I like that. He said, look full, full. I mean, look at his face well. Don't look at the ear or the hair or his chin or some. Ne- look in the face of Jesus. Look in the face. You are not looking at his face well. I'm not looking at his face well. The men who do well in ministry, they know Jesus well. Listen, when you listen to them preaching, you can tell, no, 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 no. This is not the pastor. This man is a follower of Jesus. He's trying to obey Jesus. He's answering past questions. As his followers are following merrily, it's like, it's like party time. 
chanting slogans and wearing t-shirts look full in his face and not just his face his wonderful face take it again my dear turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things on earth would grow strangely deep in the light in the light of his glory of his glory and his grace, and grace. that boy will be dim your money will be dim your job will be dim your mother will be dim your children will be dim ah to be like him oh to be like him oh to be like jesus blessed redeemer pure as the night today pastors don't fear god they don't fear god there's nothing in them that fears god anointed men are followers of Jesus. Pure it's so easy. If you find anybody who is struggling following a man of God, it means he doesn't know Jesus. 100%. I'll take it again. Anybody you know who is struggling to follow a father, a pastor, a man of God that he should follow and he's struggling to follow that person, I, I, I don't know him, but I can close my eyes and say, he doesn't know Jesus. To be like him. Oh, to be like him. Oh, to be like Jesus. Blessed Redeemer. Pure as the white. Come in that sweetness. Clap your hands for Jesus. Now, now, now. Yes. You can also be successful in following a man of God by following someone who has followed that man successfully. I can follow this man by following someone who has followed this person you really want to follow you see thank you following is actually a language the art of following is the art of understanding it, it is a language following someone depends on your level of proficiency in that language. You can follow someone and not understand him. You, you can't even interpret the things he's doing. But there is someone who has followed, who you can relate with more easily. So one of the things you do when God shows you an anointed person, is to always ask yourself, who has successfully followed this person? Because that big person there may be exuding a message you don't understand. When Bishop wanted to enter the miracle and power ministry, power ministry, He spotted a woman 
called Catherine Coleman. Catherine Coleman. One of the most wonderful healing ministers who ever lived. Miracles that were attested to by medical doctors. Books were written about their miracles. Naturally, anybody who would want to who would want the miracle ministry would want to follow Catherine Coleman. But God told him, don't follow Catherine Coleman. Follow Benny Hinn. He may, Benny Hinn may have something that you can follow more easily. Instead of going to wake Catherine Coleman from the dead, there is a man around you who has successfully followed her in her time. Follow him. One of the reasons why people are not able to follow anointed men of God well is that their eyes are fixed only on those men of God. But it is time for you. May God open your eyes. Sometimes he's somebody you don't like. Sometimes he's somebody you look down on. But whatever you do, the person has... You see, John, is it 14, 11, I think. Is it 11, 14? He said, believe in me. As you believe in the Father, believe in me. Or else... Believe in me for the very work's sake. Uh, even if you don't like me, look at my works. That is why one of the things to do if you want to follow someone is to follow a person who has been delegated and appointed. I'll take it again. This is one of the points. I'm ending now. I'm, I'm not going through everything. One of the things to do is to follow. Uh, when, 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 when a man of God you admire sends someone, if you really want to be like that man of God, one of the things that will open spiritual doors to you is to receive that person who has been sent to you. But most of us are not intelligent enough. Some of us are not intelligent. Most people want to relate with the chief executive. They want the big man. People just want the bishop himself. I mean the bishop or no bishop. Mr. Bishop man or no one. Yeah. I, I, I need to see the man. Like the guys came and said we must see Jesus. We don't relate with apprentices. He said I must see Jesus. Let me tell you something very 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 important. Yeah. Let me tell you something. It is very, very difficult to meet Jesus or to meet a man of God. Or to, it, it's not easy. Even you, a local champion, people can see you. But the man of God sends. So Christ was amazed that the people claimed to know God and they were beating him. They claimed to follow God and they were killing him. They said, how? How can you say God is your father and you are about to kill me? How? May you be able to identify messengers of anointed men. Emissaries of anointed men. Delegates of anointed men. People anointed men have put, look, even if the person is your child, humble yourself. And say, no, here's something I don't have. It is one of the ways to have access. I will not be surprised if that courtier who recommended David was somebody David played the harp for or two one day. David could have said, Charlie, if you don't take me to the palace, I'm not playing no harp. I said, well, I play for kings. I play for, I, I play for bishops. 
I play for I play for kings. But when he met this guy, this servant, he said, no, I'll play for you. Because it always takes, you see, a lot of the destinies of great men lie in the hands of servants and unimportant people. A lot of the destinies of great men, like the destiny of Naaman, was in the hands of a servant. The servant's counsel is what made him a, 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 somebody, a, a complete man. Until he received that little servant, he was leprous to his underwear. Don't have a habit of disrespecting secretaries. Those of you who go to offices, you want to see the MD, you want to see the bishop, you want to see whatever, but the secretary there, you just pass. And eventually, you come back to him or to her. Have you not passed by people to go to somebody's room and the person's door was locked? And you come back scratching your head with your twisted face. You are now coming to greet. Oh, but uh, uh, just saying, but uh, uh, mommy, uh, oh. and if you, if the person is like my grandmother, you say sit down. She will ask you, a woman who never went to school. She will ask you, have you been to school? <laughs> Are you educated? <laughs> Are you not the one who went to infant training school? How come I am more intelligent than you? And when she is turned away, she will tell you, you are not bright. <laughs> you, you feel like disappearing. <laughs> A smallish 106 year old woman. 106. So you are not bright. May God show you somebody, a messenger, a follower. He may be your younger brother. He may be somebody with something you don't like. But may, receive humility now. I think the answer is humility. Take it. Take humility. It's a spirit. Let it enter you. It's a cloak. A cloak of humility. Let it fall upon you. May nothing make you big. Yes. You may never meet that man of God in a thousand years. But there is someone you can meet who is, he may not carry everything, but he has a few of the passwords. Lift your hands and receive God's grace. Lift your hands and receive God's blessings. Lift your hands and receive the hand, a hand, a hand, a hand, a hand that changes your life and moves you into great blessings. Lift your hands and let's close. Pray. Ask the Lord, Father, talk to me continually not just in this conference not just in this conference let me continue so that my kingdom will be appointed to me let me continue so that I will also sit on thrones judging the tribes let me continue so that I will have a government and peace that increase without end let my ministry not end suddenly let me die preaching let me die in my most anointed form lift your hands let me die whenever i'll die may i be at the peak prado staba Shondikilia te brazinoma alata kaba. Mani Mosa, may you have your kingdom, may you have your kingdom, may you have your throne, may you go in and out drinking and eating at the table of kings. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you for every blessing and every grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's welcome. Bishop Patrick.
If you are clapping, clap, do it better. You could be nowhere better than being here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Honestly.